بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ویلکم اگین گائز ویلکم ٹو اندر ویڈیو لیکچر بائی کمی بیالوجی سو ویلکم بیک ٹو دس سیریز اگین مینس ڈی این اے ٹرانسکرپشن ان کیس آف یو کریٹس نو ان دا پریویس ویڈیو لیکچر اف یو گائز ریممبر وی ٹاکڈ اباؤٹ دا ڈی این اے دا پروٹین انزائمس سم آف دا ٹرانسکرپشن فیکٹر اینڈ اور ویو ایٹ دا بیگ پکچر آف دا ڈی این اے ٹرانسکرپشن ان کیس آف دا یو کریٹ وی آلریڈی ٹاکڈ اباؤٹ دیٹ If you missed that video lecture, it is present into my channel, you can just go back and watch it. Today in this video lecture, we are going to talk about another series, uh, another video lecture of this series, we call that Initiation of DNA Transcription in Eukaryotes. Okay, now guys, remember, whenever you need to understand the DNA transcription in case of the Eukaryotes and when you need to understand the DNA transcription initiation in case of Eukaryotes, so first of all, you need to watch the DNA transcription in case of the prokaryotes. Once you get idea about that, then this one uh, uh, eukaryotic DNA transcription will be very easy for you. Because uh, eukaryotic DNA transcription is very complicated. It involves complicated stages and steps, uh, uh, proteins, uh, enzyme, transcriptional factors. It will involve a lot of uh, and due to this way it can make the topic very difficult for us to understand it so that's why here i am recommending to you guys that you must watch the transcription dna transcription in case of the procurator it will be very easy for you once you guys get idea about that then you will easily understand about the transcription dna transcription in case of the eukaryote so if you miss the dna transcription in case of prokaryotes it is present into my channel you can go back and watch it or don't worry i will give the links of all the dna transcription in case of the prokaryotes the playlist i will give the link so then you can check inside the link and then you will got all the lecture of dna transcription in case of the prokaryotes okay now second thing that i must uh, want to tell you about that uh, remember initiation in dna transcription in case of dna transcription in eukaryotes is very difficult and it involves a lot of uh, steps and it involves uh, Uh, many of the transcriptional factors uh, and uh, one of the uh, DNA, uh, one of the proteins is also involved. So if we talked about the DNA transcription in case of the prokaryotes, so if you guys remember we talked that in this case we just need uh, RNA polymerase and the sigma factor and after that we get the initiation of DNA transcription which is very simple. But in this case you will see that how Uh, this one is uh, too much different and how this much uh, th this one is a uh, uh, very complicated uh, stage so remember and one thing more about that uh, if we talked about the dna termination dna transcription termination in case of the procurator so it, again it's very simple means it involved uh, two mechanism we talked uh, row dependent and row independent mechanism and row dependent we talked that it involved the uh, row proteins and in row independent it involves uh, some of the molecules and due to this way the rna structure are bent due to this way it make a hairpin loop like structure by which the tra termination of transcription will occur but here there is no uh, uh, like that one process or phenomena in this termination of dna transcription in case of the eukaryotes okay we will talk it in uh, next video we will talk it after a few videos uh, now then how the initiation of dna transcription will be started before that you need to understand some of the transcriptional factor and proteins which are involved in dna transcription in case of the eukaryote so i already explained it on the computer screen in urdu or hindi language if you want to watch that video lecture it is present to my channel you can go back and watch it now how the dna transcription initiation of dna transcription involved in case of the eukaryote so let me write okay guys Now, how the initiation of DNA transcription are uh, occur in case of the eukaryotes? Okay, in this case, first of all, I will write some of the requirements of the initiation of DNA transcription. That what kinds of enzymes and proteins are involved in case of DNA initiation of DNA transcription, and what are the main sequences which are required in initiation of DNA transcription. Then we will explain it uh, step by step. Okay, in this case, we need RNA polymerase two. So let me write here. polymerase to enzyme okay this is the first requirement the second we need in this case transcriptional factors and mainly in this case we need transcriptional factor 2 why because if we need rna polymerase 2 now remember rna polymerase 2 is the very important enzyme why because it can synthesize a lot of 
আরনি আর ট্রান্সফার আরনি মেসেঞ্জার আরনি রায় বসমল আরনি মাই আরনি এস আই আর নে এস এন আর নে সো লট অফ আর্নি আর সেন্ট সাই বাই দিস আর নে পলিমার ইস টু দ্যাটস ওয়াই ইটস ভেরি ইম্পর্টেন্ট এস কম্পেয়ার টু আদার আর নে পলিমার ইস ওয়ান ইন টু আর আর নে পলিমার ইস থ্রি ইট ইস ভেরি ইম্পর্টেন্ট এম দেম বাট রিমেম্বার দিস আর নে পলিমার ইস টু এজ আ ভেরি লার্জ স্ট্রাকচার এন্ড ইট উইল রিক্রুটস অল দ্য ট্রান্সক্রিপশনাল ফ্যাক্টার্স এন্ড মোর এভার ইট উইল আলসো রিক্রুটস মেনলি ইট উইল রিক্রুটস জেনারালাইজ ট্রান্সক্রিপশনাল ফ্যাক্টার্স and specialized transcriptional factor so these two factors are involved in this case okay rna polymerase 2 after it make the it mainly in this case it make we here we will just talked about the messenger rna that how it will synthesize the messenger rna although it will synthesize a lot of rna but here we will talked about the messenger rna so it will synthesize the messenger rna so once it will synthesize the messenger and so remember messenger rna are mainly important in the protein synthesis so we get a lot of proteins different kinds of protein which need it for the cell and it will provide a lot of different kinds of function uh, means a lot of protein so definitely we will have a lot of uh, function of the protein so that's why rna polymerase 2 are very important and here we will explain the rna polymerase 2 dna uh, transcription process but remember inshallah in some other video lecture then we will explain the rna polymerase 1 dna transcription process and we will explain rna polymerase 3 dna transcription process in in the next videos lecture okay in upcoming videos lecture now what happened now in generalized transcriptional factor we mainly need some other things and these are the transcriptional factor 2 we need it why because this why we need transcription factor 2 and why we don't need transcription factor 1 and 3 because in this case as we talk the rna polymerase 2 so definitely we need transcriptional factor 2 and in transcriptional factor 2 there are many of the transcriptional factor 2 proteins uh, uh, factors are involved like we have transcriptional factor 2a transcriptional factor 2b transcriptional factor 2 d with the help of uh, it can it mainly involve tbp protein as well means tata binding protein it will it is actually the part of this transcriptional factor 2d okay then we have a uh, transcriptional factor 2e and we have transcriptional factor 2 uh, f and transcriptional factor 2H. So these are the main important enzyme. Now these are also called activators. Okay. And some of them are also mediators molecules. Now so what kind of DNA sequences we need in initiation of DNA transcription. So I already explained the different kinds of DNA sequen uh, sequences we need. We talked uh, that we need, uh, you know, uh, Tata box region. We talked we need a uh, 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 BRE region and some other region as well. I, I already explained all the region which are involved in the DNA transcription in case of the uh, eukaryotes. So it is present into my chair. You can go back and watch it. So in this case, I will draw just a few of the sequences, consensus sequences which are found in case of the eukaryotic DNA transcription. Okay, so I'm not drawing the whole sequences which I talked in my previous video. So again, in this case, we need mainly in this case, we need a, a, a strong promoter region, promoter region and in promoter region it will mainly involve tata box okay and in case of prokaryotes we talked that printbo box is actually in what tart box okay but in this case we have tata box now we uh, we need a transcriptional start point we talk that it always present at minus 25 position and transcriptional start point will always present at plus one position of the downstream. It will present minus 25 position of the upstream. Okay. Now, then we need a initiator box. 
this is a transcriptional uh, start point is also called initiator box because here the initiation of DNA transcription is started that's why it is also called initiator box and uh, we also need BRE region which is present uh, down at uh, downstream uh, mainly in downstream elements and we also need uh, upstream elements which are found at the upstream of the DNA so remember it will present uh, at minus 25 position it will present at plus 1 and it will be present at uh, plus 25 position and the upstream element will be present at uh, uh, plus uh, what we can say 30 position or uh, 40 position let's suppose I forget the exact position of this upstream element so anyway mainly 50 position let's suppose okay you will check it that whether it is present at 50 or uh, uh, 60 okay anyway now these are the main sequences consensus sequences that we required in initiation of DNA transcription already uh, you know I already uh, draw a lot of sequences which are found in DNA transcription case of the eukaryote. You can go back and watch it that what kind of DNA uh, sequences we need. So here we just need that things. Now again in this case what we have so this is the main things that we required in DNA transcription uh, initiation of DNA transcription. Now for the first steps what happened let's start the initiation of DNA transcription. For the first steps what actually happened in this case we have a DNA molecule, let's suppose. This is a DNA molecule. Its one end will have 5 to 3 prime end, while its other end have 3 to 5 prime end. And remember, RNA polymerase 2 mainly use this lower strand having 3 to 5 prime end because uh, it is the template strand and it will produce the coding strand which is uh, 5 to 3 prime end. RNA uh, will have 5 to 3 prime end. The RNA polymerase 2 can't use the upper strand having 5 to 3 prime end because uh, it is already coding strand. So if it is, it is already coding strand, so why it will use this one strand? First thing. Second thing is that its direction is already 5 to 3 prime. So that's why it don't need the upper stream. Okay. Now, there are, let me draw somewhere at that position. Now, let's suppose this is the Tata, Tata box. Okay. And uh, somewhere at that position, it will be the initiator box or transcriptional start point. And after that, at that specific position, we have B R E region or B recognition element. So remember, this is actually the plus one position. This will be a uh, plus 25 position and this will be minus 25 position. Okay, now remember whenever the molecules which are present uh, at left side of this transcription start point at that position we call that uh, upstream and all the sequences which is present right side of this plus one position so we call that uh, downstream downstream okay now this is a little bit concept about that so first of all one uh, transcriptional factor will be activated in this case and we call it transcriptional factor 2d so transcriptional factor 2d is activated and it will bind to this tata box region okay why it bind on the tata box region because it have already tata binding protein it is bind with it so if we see the structure of this uh, tata uh, uh, transcription factor 2 so it will be just like in this form so let's suppose this is the 
so this is the tata uh, the transcriptional factor 2 d and it will you know connect it with the transcriptional factor or we can say tata binding protein now as you can see this tata binding protein have high affinity to bind with tata box region so that's why this tfd uh, 2d need this tbp so when it will combine together or it is mainly the part tbp is already the part of tf2d so when these two proteins are binded with each other so then it will you know bind to this tata box region and once it bind to the tata box region due to their high affinity then it will cause the dna to be bent at minus 70 or 80 position i forget the exact angle so almost uh, minus 80 angle okay so at that angle the dna will be bent now why the dna bend i will explain the reason behind that uh, after a few minutes so let's suppose this uh, means uh, so let's let me draw here so this is the this is the transcriptional factor 2d and this will be the transcriptional factor uh, this is the tata binding protein and after that dna will be milled so let me draw here the dna again okay so just imagine that this dna is a, uh, in a coiled form okay uh, here I, I can draw the coiled form of the dna but you guys just imagine that the dna is actually in a coiled form now <clears throat> remember the dna is a bended okay and uh, one thing i forget here that uh, at somewhere at that specific position there will be the upstream element upstream element okay so what happened Again, let me draw the whole things here. Okay, and it will, you know, bend the DNA as you can see. And somewhere at that position, as you can see, this will be the upstream element and this is the transcriptional start point transcriptional start point and this is the BRE position okay now once the DNA bend at minus 80 angle then you know what happened the dna is bended here in this case but there will be the chance that the dna again come back to its spiritual position again it will be straight and we need the bending form of the dna there are some beta structure like proteins that's why the dna will bend in this case so to stabilize that structure to stabilize the bending structure of the dna what happened it will recruit the another transcriptional factor which we call a transcriptional factor 2a so after some time we get another transcriptional we call a transcriptional factor 2a so this is the transcriptional factor 2a okay now once the transcriptional factor 2a are recruited here so then it will stabilize the dna structure bending form of the dna structure it will stabilize as you can see now the dna uh, structure are stabilized the bending form of the dna structure are stabilized once it's stabilized then it will not back to its original position so it will preventing the original position of the dna structure okay after that it will recruits another transcriptional factor 2 and we call it transcriptional factor 2b so then transcriptional factor 2b is binded at that specific position so at bre site as you can see 
at Bieri set transcriptional factor 2b will be bind here that's why we called it Bieri okay B recognition element now once it will bind here then this transcription factor 2b will give signal to RNA polymerase to bind to sit at that specific position so this transcription factor 2b will give signal to RNA polymerase 2 to bind at that specific position then after that RNA polymerase 2 will be recruited here so here I will draw the RNA polymerase 2 which is very difficult for you guys to visualize that but let's suppose this is the transcription factor 2 now remember transcription factor 2 have also the C catalytic site as, as it is the protein it means we talk that enzymes are mainly protein so it will have N and C terminal so this one as you can see this one is actually the C terminal domain and what are the function of this C terminal domain we will talk it later now once RNA polymerase 2 this is the RNA polymerase 2 bind here then what happen after that you know the DNA the, uh, this now once RNA polymerase 2 bind here so still it will not tightly recognize this Tata box region or this complex completely then after that it for the proper binding to this uh, promoter region then it will recruit another factor which we call a specialized transcriptional factor so specialized transcriptional factor is itself a long uh, you know factor and it will come and bind to that area and it will you know recognize this RNA polymerase uh, and it will give signal to the RNA polymerase that it is the right place of uh, your so you must bind here and you are ready to start the initiation of DNA transcription so after that uh, we recruit specialized transcriptional factor and remember specialized transcriptional factor have two domain okay so let's suppose we recruited here specialized transcriptional factor so as you can see so this is specialized transcriptional factor and this specialized transcriptional factor as you can see it have two domain now this first domain is called as use domain upstream element domain okay while this one oh sorry its other domain will be bound with this RNA polymerase okay now this other domain is called as RNA polymerase binding RNA polymerase 2 domain okay so once it bind with RNA polymerase 2 and as well as with the upstream element then RNA polymerase recognize their place now it will completely bind here and once RNA polymerase are tightly bound at that specific area due to this specialized transcription factor then after that it will start the initiation of DNA transcript but not after that but somehow it is ready to start the DNA uh, uh, initiation of DNA transcription now remember this uh, special transcriptional factor the main function of this special transcription factor is there are two main function of this special transcriptional factor not two but let's suppose there are two main function the first the very first function is that that it will bend the DNA more okay now once it will bend the DNA more why it can bend the DNA more and more because it will just uh, you know place the RNA polymerase 2 correctly on the promoter region that's why it will bend the DNA and the second function is that it will signal to the RNA polymerase 2 that you are at the right place and now it is the time to start the initiation of DNA transcription stage this is the main function of this uh, specialized transcriptional factor okay. 
so that's why the bending is very important so the bending is important because the specialized transcriptional factor is bind here so when the transcriptional specialized transcriptional factor bind due to this bending uh, position then it will cause more bending and due to this way rna polymerase is now correctly bind here then it will recruits another proteins and another or we can say another transcriptional factor is recruited here and we call it transcriptional factor 2e because transcriptional factor 2e once recruited here let's suppose this is the structure of transcriptional factor 2e okay transcriptional factor 2e once the transcriptional factor 2e are recruited here so then transcriptional factor uh, one thing more that remember transcriptional factor 2f is recruited whenever the transcriptional uh, whenever the rna polymerase 2 is uh, bind here so, re so remember with rna polymerase 2 it will always bind with transcriptional factor 2f okay rna polymerase always bind with the transcriptional factor 2 uh, transcription factor 2f okay so whenever the rna polymerase bind here after the T tf2b so then rna polymerase bind here which have already transcription factor 2f okay now what happen after that once the transcriptional factor 2e are binded here then it will give the signal to transcriptional factor 2h so then transcriptional factor 2h will bind to this rna polymerase so let's suppose this is the transcriptional factor 2h will bind here and when the transcriptional factor 2h are bind here then we get a complex and we call that as you can see on a big complex we will get and this complex is called as minimal pre initiator complex and due to this way the dna the initiation of dna transcription will be started but before that some of the transcriptional factor should be dissociated from that area okay so after that many of the trans uh, you know just uh, rna polymerase 2 and this uh, transcriptional factor 2h will just remain here and the remaining transcriptional factors and proteins uh, and transcription transcription factor 2 and protein will be dissociated from here so again what we get we get the structure like that so this is the dna as you can see okay and this is the rna polymerase and this is the c terminal of rna polymerase okay we'll talk the main function of this c terminal later now rna polymerase 2 with transcriptional factor 2h okay will just remain here and the rest of the transcriptional factor and protein will be released out or dissociated from here and remember when all the protein will dissociate it from here so definitely the dna will again come back to its preserved position because we talk that uh, transcriptional factor 2d and tbp have the ability to bend the dna if these two molecules as well as the stf have also the ability to bend the dna more if these factors are released out so the dna are no more bend now the dna will come back to its original position as you can see okay now once all the factors are releases from here so then what happened this dna is started melted because here is tat means tata box are present so it means that ta 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 sequences are present here and their complementary is also present it means that the bond which is present between them all of you better know that it is the very the bond between them is the so for example it is that uh, thymine and adenine so it is very weak bond between them and weak bond between them and it is the double hydrogen bond so definitely dna will be mil start melting at that position so when the dna 
start melted at that position so it will make another complex we are called that open complex now this open complex is formed by this transcriptional factor 2h this transcriptional factor 2h have two main function the first function that they have you know uh, we call it ATPs and second function they have helicase Now remember, it will require ATP energy. So it will absorb the ATP energy and transfer this ATP energy to RNA polymerase. So when RNA polymerase got the ATP energy, so then it will move in the forward direction. Means at right direction. It can also move at left direction when it will use the upper strand 3 prime end. Okay. Now, once it need the ATP energy, then it will move and this TF2H will also, you know, have helicase activity means it will unwind the DNA at this start of oxygen and melt the DNA. So the DNA will be open. And after that, we will get the structure of DNA like that. As you can see. So the DNA is now melted. And we get a structure like that. We call that transcriptional bubble transcriptional okay now we get a transcriptional bubble so this is also called open complex and this is also called transcriptional bubble now this is the RNA polymerase 2 which are binded here okay and this is the arm of RNA polymerase 2 or the C terminal of RNA polymerase 2. Now once we get the transcriptional bubble then after that there are some other you know regulatory factor transcriptional regulatory factor are also recruited here transcriptional regulatory factor and transcriptional regulatory factor we have CRAB CBF and SP so these are the transcription regulatory factor which are recruited here and once it recruited here then it will activate the RNA nucleotide then ribonucleotide will be activated and all of you better know ribonucleotide are always present in the nucleus of the cell because it is the eukaryotic DNA transcription so it will be present inside the nucleus if it is the prokaryotic DNA transcription to it so it will be present in the in case of the cytosol so then after that what happened at that specific position then nucleotide will be added like CTP, UTP, ATP and GTP. So all the nucleotide these are actually ribonucleotide or RNA sequences will be banned here one and after the other and then what actually we get we get the addition of uh, so then RNA strand will be synthesizing at that specific position so after that then the DNA will be you know synthesizing the addition of nucleotide RNA nucleotide then the job of this C terminal this is the C domain domain of RNA polymerase now the main function of this C domain is phosphorylation phosphorylation it means that they are specially involved helping the uh, RNA nucleotide addition. So it means that the C domain is mainly responsible in phosphorylate. So it will phosphorylate the serine and as well as it will phosphorylate all these protein, all these nucleotide as you can see these are the RNA sequences. All these RNA nucleotides. Okay means it can add the RNA nucleotide one with the other. So RNA nucleotide will be added one and after with the other. So how let's suppose so this is uh, means uh, let's suppose with uh, let me write with the red marker. Now let's suppose this is uh, RNA nucleotide one. So the next RNA nu uh, nucleotide will have uh, three phosphate as you can see. Now when 
वन न्यूक्लोटाइड आर एडेड देन इट हैव एल्फा चेन ड्यू टू दिस एल्फा चेन इट विल अटैक टू दिस टू फास्पेड ग्रुप आफ्टर द टू फास्पेड ग्रुप विल बी रिलीज आउट इन द फॉर्म ऑफ पायरोफासपेड सो इन द फॉर्म ऑफ पायरोफासपेड दिस इनऑर्गेनिक फासपेड और पायरोफासपेड इज नीड टू प्रोड्यूस इनर्जी इन द फॉर्म ऑफ ए टी पी सो अगेन हेयर इनर्जी इज ऑल्सो रिक्वायर्ड इनर्जी इज ऑल्सो रिलीज वेन द न्यूक्लोटाइड आर एडेड वन एंड आफ्टर अदर थ्रू दिस मैकेनिज्म सो वेन द न्यूक्लोटाइड आर एडेड through this mechanism so this is about the elongation of dna transcription so we will explain elongation of dna transcription in the next video lecture so this is all about the initiation of dna transcription in case of the eukaryotes i hope you guys get idea about that now remember elongation of dna transcription in case of eukaryote is very simple to the prokaryote if you better know about the prokaryotic dna transcription elongation so then it will be very easy for elongation of dna transcription in case of you because both are very similar to each other there is no difference between them okay so if you know that so then best of luck if you don't know about that so inshallah in the next video lecture i will also explain the elongation of dna transcription in case of the eukaryote and how it will be happen again in this case we need uh, protein bridge and uh, some of the things we need we will talk it later okay so this is all about the initiation of dna transcription i hope you guys get idea about that if you have any kind of uh, question in your mind you can write it into a comment and if you like this video make sure to hit the like button share this video and definitely subscribe the channel to get more interesting videos like that thank you so much take care allah hafiz